What's up guys, it's Angel, and what better way to do your nails than with cleaning products, am I right? The first time I saw a Brillo Pad Manny was about a year ago on Lacquer Loon's Instagram page. If you guys don't follow her, you should because she posts swatches of basically every nail polish that's ever existed. I will link her Instagram page down below. This technique is really, really easy and it's great for beginners. I decided to put stamping over it, but if you don't know how to stamp, you can definitely do this on its own. So let's get into it. So under my kitchen sink, I didn't exactly have the green Brillo pad version of this that I was picturing in my head. I only had this blue version and I didn't want to title my video Scotch Bright Non Scratch Scour Pad Nail Art because that sounds terrible and it's way too long and I thought you guys would know what I mean if I just called it a Brillo pad Manny, right? And if you find yourself totally distracted by what's on my nails right now, this is my last tutorial, my hollow powder pigment tutorial. Don't mind my missing fingernail. I was testing a peel off base coat. I figured working with smaller pieces was gonna be the easiest way to do this. So first I cut some strips and then you can just throw away that extra piece. You don't need it. Then I cut those bigger strips into smaller little cubes or squares kind of like cube and some cheese maybe i knew i'd need about eight of them because i was using eight different colors then i noticed that my little cubes of cheese had uh, some blue particles stuck on them so i tried to rub it off to make sure that it wasn't going to get stuck into the polish on my nails and finally onto the painting part here i'm applying my base coat this is julep nail therapy and then I applied one coat of OPI Alpine Snow and later on you'll see why I kind of regret not doing two coats. It wasn't absolutely necessary, but I think it might have made things go a little easier if I did two coats, so word to the wise. And then to make cleanup easier later, I applied Bundle Monster Poly Peel to protect my skin. You can skip the liquid latex if you don't have any. This isn't exactly the messiest nail art, which is kind of nice for a change. So I just applied it because I have it. Why not? Then taking a little piece of scrap paper, I plopped out my first polished base color. By the way, all polishes will be listed below in the description bar. And then I took a little cube of the Brillo pad and loaded it up with the color and made sure to tap off the excess. Then you're just going to want to dab the Brillo pad onto the nail and you're going to want to like twist and turn it so you're not like repeating the pattern of the Brillo pad on the nail. And then you're going to want to use the corner of the Brillo pad to get into the crevices of the nail. And yes, it's official. I used the word crevices in my past three videos. I'm so proud of myself. And here you can see why I wished I used two layers of the white base because the Brillo pad ended up kind of scratching up some of that base color. So I just took a little brush and dabbed on some of the polish I was just sponging on. And then here is my next base Brillo pad color. I don't know, this is so weird that I'm using this as a tool, but doesn't it look so cool? And on my Cindy hand, you can kind of see a white line near my skin because I wasn't able to get into those crevices with the Brillo pad using my non-dominant hand. And boom, just like that, she throws in a second crevice. Some of you guys may be wondering, why doesn't this crazy bitch just use a sponge? But you're not gonna get that texture with the makeup sponges that you use for gradients. It's gonna be much more smooth. And once I had all my base colors down, it was time to move on to the second layer. So I chose kind of brighter or darker colors to go over the base colors so that they would pop a little more. Now, I actually really like the way the nails look with only one coat and the second coat looks cool, but I mean, for a really easy look, you can just do the first coat. I mean, hey, why not? I tried to be a little strategic on where I was placing that color, but I mean, you really can't mess it up. So if you had too much polish on one part, too little on another part, it is what it is. I ended up busting out my brush again to fill in those spots that the Brillo pad was kind of, you know, ripping up the base color again. 
now I'm just gonna speed this up some because you guys totally get what's going on by now. So I kind of wish that I would have done all the nails the same two colors or maybe, you know, two of the different color versions I did. But I wanted to show you guys multiple versions of these nails. So if I was gonna wear this, I would definitely only do one or two colors. But hey, I mean, you want a rainbow on your nails? Have a rainbow on your nails. And then it was time to peel off my poly peel. And it never fails. Someone always asks where I get these rainbow tweezers from. So I will link them down below. They are really, really sharp and nice and angled. And they're really pretty. So they're my favorite tweezers. And does anybody else do this with their liquid latex? I always smush it up into a ball and play with it for a second. I can't help myself. Then I did a little cleanup using my favorite large cleanup brush and 100% acetone. And then more poly peel. I know I just peeled some off, but I find it easier to do two layers of it when I'm gonna be stamping over something because otherwise it's just a mess. And then to prep for stamping, I applied one layer of yellow stopper because it gives your nail a little bit of a tacky surface and it helps the stamping to apply better. And then because I'm an idiot, I let my fingers touch and it peeled off my poly peels, so I had to apply even more of it. And the stamping plate I chose is from the Bundle Monster Music City Collection, linked down below. And I went with my favorite Big Bling Stamper from Clear Jelly Stamper. And this is an awesome combo. I stamped five nails and I only had to do five pickups. These worked so well together. Look at that. It's perfect. Now the stamping was an extra step. You really don't have to do this part and I almost regret doing it. I wish I would have did the stamping in white. I think it would have looked better. Um, this just isn't really my favorite pattern. I mean, it's cool, but I kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of just liked it on its own. And once all my nails were stamped, it was time to peel some more. Do you want a s'more? S'more what? S'more what? You're killing me, Smalls! I can't even tell you how many times I've seen that movie. And if you don't get the reference, then just leave. Leave now. Whenever you do black stamping, you wanna be careful of smearing, so I always like to use a heavy bead of top coat and float the brush over the nail so that you're not dragging over that black polish, and that's what causes smearing. So, a little extra top coat will be your friend here. And I didn't realize till reviewing my footage just now that I have a lot of bubbles in my top coat here. Hmm, I wonder if I shook up my top coat on accident. And that, my friends, is how you avoid doing chores. Next time someone asks you to do the dishes, you can just say, uh, no, I used all the Brillo pads on my nails and they look amazing. Sorry. If you haven't had enough of me and you want to see more, I will link another beginner nail art tutorial in the description bar. It looks really complicated, but it's so easy. You can also follow me on the old Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at twy underscore star. And thank you guys so much for watching this stupid tutorial, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! No worries, I'm just losing my mind over here, but I had to get over it. And then to finish applying it, you just, I mean, rub it in. <laughs> rub, rub in that hollow, everybody.